So, when Ivana Lynch was cast as Luna Lovegood in the Harry Potter films, it was a life-changing role for her in many ways. Now, she already had a special connection to Harry and the author J.K. Rowling, saying both helped her to overcome an eating disorder in her teens. She's written a new memoir about her experiences. We'll speak to her in just a moment. Let's take a look back at her most famous role. Look, we'll talk later, OK, Luna? Harry! Uh, later! Harry Potter! You listen to me right now! Here with us in the studio. Ivana, it's quite interesting. So people will know at home that we have monitors here mm -hmm. and, and it shows what, what people at home are seeing, we mm -hmm. can see here in the studio as well. And when it first when your Harry Potter appearances first came up, you kind of looked <laughs> the other way. Rather pointedly, <laughs> deliberately looking sure. the other way. I mean, do you want to be showing your fourteen year old self at what, eight in the morning? <laughs> I'm like, no. oh. <laughs> do you know what it's I mean it's a really good it's a really good point, but I'm I'm thinking is there something in that which is that we see, oh, the magic of Harry Potter, uh -huh. and there's a bit of you thinking, I remember what what was things were going on personally, and I know mm. I know that you yeah you're you got in touch with J.K. Rowling before you actually got cast, uh -huh. but yes. you were struggling with quite a lot of things. Yeah, I mean, by the time I was doing the films, I was quite I was moved on a fair bit, but. Um, yeah, I do. I, it does bring me back to who I was, like the the anxiety and uh, I think the insecurity of being a teenager. So that's probably what I'm reacting to. Um, but yeah, th I I mean, it, 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 that film and that time it had a real transformative effect on my life and my mental health, everything really. Yeah, it's intriguing because the connection. I didn't know this until I was kind of we were doing our research mm -hmm. that you had a connection with J.K. Rowling mm -hmm. before you. Pen pals, you, you wrote to her. Yeah, it was. I mean, t quite a fluke, really. I I, I wrote to her uh, while I was going through my eating disorder because, as anyone with an eating disorder will know, it's quite a unique thing for something to be able to take your mind off what you're going through. And for me, that was Harry Potter. That was the books. It just had this power of capturing my imagination. Um, so yeah, I wrote to her and just kind of to thank her and. I don't know why, but she read my letter and wrote back, and yeah, since then. Then and did kind of... any of that have anything to do with you being cast in the film, or was that completely? It, it was separate? quite unrelated, and that's I think where people get confused yeah. um, because the, I I responded to an open casting call, and I actually was like, oh, I I, I didn't want to tell her that I got the role because I thought she might be disappointed because, you know, I was like I had all these issues in my past, and I was like she might want somebody who doesn't have mental health issues. Um, there was that anxiety and you know there is stigma around that. Pe a lot of people kind of think you have to get better, you have to heal yourself on to, to, to go back into society but I really think there's a lot of healing from people you know helping people with mental health issues to reintegrate into society and to find a way to contribute. But she's also been quite open about her own struggles uh -huh. as well. Did you ever talk to her I about could, it? I mean it was more she was more just generous in her letters but um towards my situation but i always could sense she has all this wisdom from yeah. you know some but i was also an 11 year old child <laughs> she was um you know she was an adult and had all that wisdom um so it was yeah a different kind of connection and i think it's it's quite a brave thing uh you're I mean, you're only 30 now aren't you to write so openly mm -hmm. about um, troubles and, and diff things people maybe don't know about your life. Mm -hmm. It's quite a big decision to do that. What was your motivation in, in being... I know, I know you've spoken about it a little bit in the past, but yeah. to, to put it out there in a book, what yeah. was the motivation? I think that was the motivation because I'd spoken about it a lot in the press and kind of found my story was turned into a fairy tale of fiction and it, it actually really frustrated me because it's like it's much more complex than when that. When you say it being turned into a fairy tale, what do you mean? They, they, what, what do you mean by well, that? Well, this idea that I recovered in order to get a part in Harry Potter or that that came first because I you can't incentivize recovery you can't kind of coax people out of their issues with a treat it, it has to something has to it has to be something you find within something deeper kind of a, a, a grit and and I think you know there was two crucial years between kind of recovering physically and getting the role in Harry Potter and those were important, you know, I didn't just go straight from the hospital and onto the, the set. So I, I really wanted to explain that because I think it was doing a disservice to people who have these issues and to my past self to just be like, it was all solved with acting and this dream come true and it, it's just not the truth. So I wanted to show, yeah, the complexity of it, the nuances and um, just tell my own story in my own words really so I can move on, I think. How easy is it to tell the story? Because when you're writing it's quite a lonely 
thing. Oh, or yeah. A solitary thing, isn't yeah. it? And, and you have no choice but to kind of face painful moments and look at how, and kind of there's a self-examination as well, isn't it? how you deal with whenever those thoughts come back, if they do, or, yeah. you know, and, and how you live your life now, how you've changed. Yeah, well, I, I think there's so much healing in expressing that stuff, you know. I, um, it was a relief to put it down on paper because I think that's, that's where the problems, they become problems when you kind of take this darkness and keep it inside. Um, so, you know, shedding light on it, shedding humor, like having a laugh, but also having perspective, that was really healing. Who do you want yeah. to read this? Who do you think will benefit from this? Um, I hope, I suppose, sensitive young people who are struggling with these issues and struggling with their own self-worth and also really for families of people struggling with eating disorders and I hope their kind of mental health professionals, their, their doctors and support team because I think it's really misunderstood and I think it's an issue that gets so sensationalized for its physical manifestations, the symptoms, and there's something much deeper going on and I wish we would be talking about the deeper problems. It's a point very well made. On a slightly more frivolous note, <laughs> Do you keep in touch with the Harry Potter cast? Do you have, like, <laughs> I, I don't know, WhatsApp get-togethers or things yeah, like that? Yeah, definitely. Do? Yeah, yeah. I saw James and Oliver Phelps recently. We did a little... Uh, they were making a documentary. And, yeah, all, it's, it's like family. They're always there. Because you, you, have, a, you have a strange shared experience, notwithstanding all yeah. the other things you've talked about. Yeah. You know, everyone had quite a, a strange time. Suddenly launched, didn't they? Some of them child actors and then growing up there's a there, you have a very unusual bond yeah and it's kind of strengthened over the years because the the more distance we get from it the older we get it still doesn't leave you know it's this thing that's just that's kind of um overshadows a lot of other stuff in your life so it's been nice to be like oh they get it they get yeah. what's going on and yeah the strangeness do people recognize you as luna lovegood yeah, yeah. It's the voice for me. Yeah, it's the <laughs> I know. voice. No, because sometimes I'll be like, you look like someone I know at school. And then I'll open my mouth and they're like, oh, I get it. Yeah. It's Luna. So, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, it's not something that I know you kind of turned away when you saw, you know, the initial clips. Oh, no, but I'm it's proud not, of it. Yeah, absolutely. And it's such an honour to have played such a lovely character who really helps people, like, and kind, kind of helps the, the people who don't fit in. I, so I'm, I'm really honoured. I just don't particularly like looking at my work. <laughs> That's quite right. Quite <laughs> fair enough. No one really likes looking back at their 14 year old no. stuff. You're right, right, absolutely right to say it. Ivana, it's been a joy to talk to you. Oh, thank, thank you. you so Thanks much. for having me nice on. Nice to thank see you. you. Ivana's book is called The Opposite of Butterfly Hunting.